Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It is Saturday afternoon and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's kind of a weird day for me. Um, like uh, I was intending to do a live stream last night, uh, but my dog was sick, so I was babysitting my dog instead. Uh, I'm a big dog lover, dog always comes first. So sorry I didn't get to that. I did promise that I would do a live stream this weekend. So I'm doing one today. Now, it's not my normal time. I usually do these during uh, weeknight evenings. So I don't expect a lot of people to trickle in, but if you guys do, uh, feel free to um, chat with me and I'll keep an eye on the uh, chat. Um, throughout and we can just you know have a conversation it's thanksgiving weekend i imagine a lot of people are busy as well so if you can't make it hopefully you're watching this at some point in the future um, but i'm just going to jump right in uh, i've got in mind uh, to do a dog portrait but i've been asked to do a dog staring at a uh, butterfly on the end of its nose so i'm going to try that and we'll see how it goes um, kind of some weird shapes in this so i don't really have a clear idea uh, let me switch to my top down view uh, so I'm, I've been wanting to do like a lot of pictures in my black paper with white pencil style. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that. I'm kind of creating a series. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and do that for this one as well. And um, it's kind of interesting doing a picture like this because you're kind of working in reverse. Uh, you might see that I have some kind of dots here to kind of guide me uh, as, uh, along as I do it, but I'm going to try to draw it freehanded. Uh, but I, I have an idea that the dog's eye will be up here and the nose will be down here and the butterfly will be somewhere around here. Uh, it's kind of a weird picture. So I'm going to start with the nose instead of the eye, which I usually start with, um, just because I think that uh, starting with the nose might anchor me a little bit better, especially with that butterfly being on his nose. Um, but my process is, again, I just kind of working in reverse from like what people normally draw, like you're dealing with lights instead of shadows. Hey, I do have somebody in here. Cool. Somebody to talk with. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to just start with the nose here. So the light is coming down from here, so it's going to be catching on this nose. So this nose is going to be super bright. But the way I do these is I kind of keep it kind of light at first, just until I get my bearings. And then the more confident I am that everything's laid out well, then I'll start making it a little bit darker. So one of the things that I'm... I'm going to be challenged with here is from the eye a little bit over the fur kind of comes down and then somewhere in here there's a butterfly so i'm just going to put in like a light line here just to let me know that the nose is kind of coming down in this direction sorry about the camera there for some reason whenever there's nothing on the page um it kind of like tries to focus and it has trouble with it but anyway so I think the butterfly is going to be around here. I think like the butt of the butterfly is going to be here. So how's it going, Bill? Um, Do you have a uh, good Thanksgiving? I don't anticipate a lot of people coming through here. Like a lot of people travel for Thanksgiving. They probably are still out hanging out with friends and family and stuff. Saturday is always like a busy day for people, especially during the summertime. But... I don't care. I wanted to draw a picture, so I'm going to do it anyway. But yeah, so just, I mean, there's a butterfly, I think is kind of tricky because like, it's just wings and a tiny little head and maybe some antennas or whatever, but I don't want it to look like a moth. So I have to be a little bit careful. I think it's, this one's not a, a particularly big butterfly compared to the dog itself. So the dog is gonna kind of take up this entire region here. So I think this is an appropriately sized butterfly. And again, I'm keeping my lines really light while I try to figure this out. Had two burritos, oh, turkey burrito, nice. It fascinates me, like all the different types of food that people eat. I think I was, uh, I was telling the story uh, Tuesday that one year I was kind of left to my own devices, but I wanted to have turkey on Thanksgiving anyway. So I went to Subway and had a turkey sandwich. I think as long as you have turkey, it counts. So with the light coming in here, this is going to be a little bit lighter than this other side, but kind of want to get an idea of where this wing is overall so that I can feel pretty confident with some of my other layout 
Yeah, I haven't listened to uh, Streets stream in a while. Um, I think he just pretty much talks about whatever comes to his mind, I think. You never really know what's going to be on his stream. Sometimes it's pretty good content. Uh, usually, like, he has a guest or two. Those are always fun to listen to. Like, I listen to Candy a lot on his stream. Whenever she's on it. But I don't... They might have had a falling out. I don't know if they're still doing a stream together. So, again, this is all going to be kind of lit up. So, I, I'm just going to kind of sketch that in real quick. Just so that I know which direction the light's coming in. And, of course, you know, this is a butterfly. So, it's going to have some markings on it and everything that are appropriate for butterflies. Like, some really white splotchy areas and such but i just kind of want to get an idea of like where the butterfly is at first i actually like doing a saturday live stream like i, I feel like a lot more relaxed today like i'm just having fun like i draw sometimes not on live streams and um i always feel like so like calm and relaxed and not not like stressed or anything like that whenever i do like that's how I feel today. Maybe because nobody's watching. <laughs> the secret to getting over um, stage fright is uh, just go on the stage when no one's looking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have a lot of stage fright anymore. Like my first stream or two, I was really self-conscious, but I think I've kind of hit my stride a bit. Where, I don't know, whether the picture comes out well or not i feel like i don't know i'm just basically drawing to create a pretty picture not to worry about like what the audience might think of it or anything like that i know when a picture turns out bad i don't i don't really need an audience to tell me <laughs> as long as most of your work is but it's okay you're allowed a few mistakes here and there, I think. I don't know. You guys are pretty forgiving, so. So, the eye is a little bit challenging because there is some white at the corner of a, a, of the dog's I'm going to call it a her because it looks like a her to me. The corner of her eye. Um, but as far as the rest of the shape of the eye, it's it's more caused by fur around it than the eye itself. So rather than drawing like a, you know, I don't know, like a football shaped eye or whatever, I have to draw the features around it to kind of box it in a little bit. Street is too ignorant and disrespectful for a phrase. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I don't know enough about street to agree with you. I probably wouldn't call him that anyway, just because I try to be nice. But... You're entitled to your opinion there, sir. Just uh, for the record, that's your opinion, not my opinion. Yeah, so like a little, like loose, like not loose, um, kind of a nondescript patch of fur above the eye. And then you get more featured fur beneath it. Like... This right here kind of spirals out from the eye and kind of like longer marks. I'll call them strokes. Longer strokes. I do like drawing uh, pets in this style. It, it's a very cool, it, whether I'm drawing pets or whether I'm drawing like just wildlife in general, this is a pretty cool style for it. Speaking of wildlife, like I, I went for a hike this morning and I, uh, I came across like I guess it's like deer remains like but it was really weird it was just a heart and like literally like a heart of a deer and I, I think there was some other like um, liver kidneys that kind of stuff all the you know basically all of this part of a deer and I couldn't tell if um, something had happened to that deer naturally or if like a poacher or something had um basically skinned the deer and, and and all of that stuff and then left these pieces out there because they didn't want to dispose of them some other way like it wasn't a place anybody should be hunting 
I'm pretty sure it was a deer. I hope it was. I hope I didn't come across like human remains or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure it was a deer. I I don't hunt myself. Um, I uh, I'm I'm too much of an animal lover to even consider doing that kind of stuff. But I've been around people who who hunt and. You know, I live in Kentucky, so it's part of the culture around here. And I'm pretty sure what I saw was the remains of, like, somebody dressing a deer. I think that's the term. I don't really know. But um, it was kind of odd because it was just out there off the trail and everything. And uh, it wasn't anywhere I would have expected that. So, a little bit of a mystery there. I don't know if I came across a crime scene or not. pretty sure what I saw was like somebody who didn't want to um, leave that stuff in their own like yard or property or something like that. So they took it out to this public property and basically dumped it. That, that'd be my guess. It, it didn't look like a, um, it didn't look like the deer died of natural causes. It looked like it was the result of somebody hunting or something like that. That's what it looked like to me at the but I, again, I admit I don't really know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't know what I encountered. Seems kind of a, a strange thing to leave out there, though. Like for buzzards, maybe I don't know. We have like bears around here somewhere. I've never seen one, but since it was only the uh, internal organs and stuff, my guess is it is um. Is evidence of a poaching. Uh, street gang never lets you tell you saw, um, cut you off after three words. Oh, that sucks, man. That's disrespectful. Yeah, more people should write those things up. Like everybody's always, um, everybody's always wanting to share their treasure i'm talking about treasure hunts like i i'm part of a treasure hunt community for those who uh don't know what uh mr gorman is talking about um anyway bill i i think more people should share those things but like there should be like i don't know like medium posts or blog posts or something like that a place for people to share those I don't know how many other, like, it's it's always the uh, thing where it's like, are people really interested in other people's ideas, or are they only interested in hearing their own? I think it's a little bit of that. That has, uh, That's not just the, uh, the treasure hunt community, that's everywhere. Hey, Ado. Hey, Ada, sorry, I always mispronounce your name. Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd... It, odd hour like it's saturday it's the afternoon it's like three hours usually earlier than i usually do them i just wanted to make sure i did some art this weekend um i've got another piece i've got to finish up uh but i can't live stream that because it's like a gift for somebody so i have to wait until that um it, wait until they receive that gift before i can actually put it out there as a video so i'm recording that separately but i did promise because i missed my live stream last night that i do one today um so yeah, if you if you can't um, stay, then that's totally fine. Um, so what I'm drawing today is what everybody said they wanted the other day. It, it's going to be a dog staring at a butterfly. So that's what I'm working on today. You know, that it seemed like that's what everybody wanted in my other dog picture, but I decided to leave the uh, butterfly off my other dog picture because it was kind of like a drawing for somebody and I didn't know if they would want a butterfly on it. So I decided to Go ahead and do the butterfly one today. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm taking my time with it. As you can see, I'm keeping the uh, pencil marks really light. And then once I know where all the uh, pieces are, this is a weird, um, it's like a profile shot of like, eh, profile shot of a uh, dog. And I'm not used to drawing that. So I'm uh, very carefully marking out all of the different pieces here. And then once I, once I'm pretty happy with how everything's laid out, then I'll come back and uh, kind of like make some marks brighter and stuff. So this is a little bit challenging because the light is coming from here. It's hitting the wing of the butterfly. So it's casting some shadow through here. So it's not really going to get really lit up until like you get around here. 
So I think I'm just going to kind of outline that shadow a little bit here. And then there'll be some marks through here because it's not all black or anything like that. Little sister's birthday. That sounds like fun. Happy birthday, little sister. From the, everybody at this channel to you, happy birthday. I've got a birthday coming up soon. Uh, in December. I haven't decided what I want to do for my birthday. The older you get, the less you start caring about birthdays. Like, you're like, eh, I got a birthday coming up. That sucks. I don't know. It, most people look forward to their birthdays. They, they look at it as kind of like a special day for themselves. I kind of do that too. Oh, for those who were wondering, the, the reason why I canceled my live stream last night is because my dog wasn't feeling very well. So I had to babysit him, and um, he is feeling better. I, I know that some people were wondering about that. Yeah, he was just acting weird. Like, um, I think he ate something he wasn't supposed to, so he had to go out a bunch, and then he was, like, antsy running around everywhere. He's a pretty hyperactive dog anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell if he was, like, ill or if he was just being hyperactive. I think he's got, like, some sort of neurological issues where he... He's like super high, hyperactive all the time, but last night he would not calm down until like I kind of like snuggled with him and, you know, he eventually fell asleep and relaxed and stuff, but it, it took a while to get him down. You were at the Acropolis for your 56th birthday. Oh, 65th. That's cool. Man, that's, that sounds like fun actually. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I would love to uh, travel to Europe or um, anywhere, really. <laughs> uh, I've been to a couple of countries, but mostly in the uh, in the United States is where I do most of my traveling. I haven't done a lot of international traveling. I don't know what kind of dog this is. I think it's a golden retriever, by the way, but it's got it's got some long flowing fur that kind of comes out away from its face, which I think will look kind of cool when it's done. So she's got some fur that kind of makes up a pretty pronounced brow through here. And um, that kind of comes up. And I think, I think that whole area of the um the face kind of comes all the way up to here i don't feel very confident about that so i'm putting in like a really light stroke here uh just to kind of it, it's kind of fun so like um so it's some tips and stuff for people who would like to uh, learn how to draw um i kind of look at it as almost like um you know they they say there's the difference between art and science but I, I don't really think that's true i don't subscribe to that idea i i think of art as science to be honest hey davio how's it going man um i kind of look at art as science because it really is there's a lot of overlap so in science you make um observations and then you know those observations lead you to test other things and make new observations um to me, that's exactly what happens when you're drawing a picture. So here, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm putting a mark up here because I've, I observed that I think there's this much space between the brows, right? This is between the brow and what's, what's going to start the dog's ear. So that's my guess, right? So like almost like a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that up here is where the ear would start, right? So I test that by putting a mark. Now, I don't feel very confident about it. I'm going to make some other marks and stuff, which is making more observations. And then, you know, as I go along, I may feel more confident in that being the correct area. And then I'll come in and, and make it darker. So if that's not science, I don't know what is because, it, you know, like it, it is exactly you're making observations, you're making measurements, you're making all of these different things that you would do in science. And you're basically recording your results. So... That whole uh, art and science, I think I think they're the same thing, to be honest. Or at least that, that's the way I look at it. it. Probably 
other people's viewpoints are going to be different, but the way I look at it is like there's a lot of overlap. Art is science. That's my thesis. Yeah, Stickman sitting in it. Well, sitting on a stack of sticky notes. Be, being a little more attentive today because it's earlier in the day. Like, usually at night, he's tired. He's taking a nap. But, yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a uh, dog and a butterfly. I should probably develop this butterfly a little bit more. Come back to the... Because I do feel pretty confident this is the right direction. And then there's going to be more dog down here, of course. But I feel pretty confident that this is where the butterfly is going to be. So let me get in here and make some butterfly-type patterns in the wings and such. I wish I was more precise with my lines and they didn't look so sketchy, but that's just the way I draw. Like, I've seen people try, like, um, you know, exercises where they try to draw a perfect circle without lifting their pencil and stuff. I should probably do some of that just because I, I end up sketching versus uh, doing, like, really technical like lines and such. We're coming up on a full year of me drawing pictures, like less than, less than two months, maybe one month. Yeah. One month away from uh, having drawn pictures for like a full year. I think before the end of the year, I'm going to go back and look at all the pictures I drew this year and see which ones are my favorite. Kind of like a best of maybe, like do a video of like just what are my favorite pictures. So yeah, like if, um, if any of you guys have some favorite pictures of mine, I don't expect you to go back through all my videos and stuff. I'll do that. Uh, but if, if one sticks out in your mind, um, and this is for anybody who watches this later. I know there's not a lot of people on here right now, but if, um, if you watch this video later and you have a favorite, um, drawing or painting or whatever it is that I did, or, you know, maybe a favorite live stream or whatever, um, leave me a comment and, or like, uh, my email is on the about page, uh, send me an email and just let me know. I'm kind of curious what other people think is my best work this year. Uh, cause I do think that I'm going to do kind of like a retrospective later in December. I think that's kind of cool. Cause like the whole, the whole year has been about trying to progress my skill set, and, um, you know, get better at like drawing and stuff like that. So it would be kind of interesting to see what other people's takes are on like what I did well and what I didn't do well. And, and, you know, that's a good point. If you have a, a picture where you think I totally screwed up. I want to hear that too. Like, let me know. Like, if there's a picture I just totally tanked on, uh, I can probably name those off the top of my head because they like leave like uh, little scars in my mind. Like one day I'm like, oh man, that just turned out terrible. There's probably quite a few of those. But yeah, I'm kind of curious. Uh, what, what's some of your favorites? What's one of some of your least favorites? Um, if you have strong opinions on those, I want to know. Let me know. If you don't, that's fine. One of the other things that's going on uh, this weekend uh, is uh, they're doing like a Bob Ross marathon here on uh, YouTube as well, which I think is kind of cool. I was watching a little bit of it yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. I lose track of uh, days on holidays, like especially week weekend long ones, like. I barely know that today's Saturday. I hope it's Saturday. I should probably double check. So, as you can see, I, I feel stronger about this uh, line here now. So I'm kind of reinforcing it by going back over it. The reason why these pictures take so long is you end up drawing the same picture multiple times just by going back, back over your lines. Now, some people, they'll probably come in and just like, okay, dog head going to be here, dog nose is going to be here, and then they uh, erase these lines and stuff like that. That's not usually how I work with these pictures. 
Uh, some of my styles are more like that, but like I don't have one style. I I um I do these more technical drawings like what I'm doing now, and then some of my other pictures are just like big old messes and stuff where I kind of carve out features from it and stuff. I don't know which one I prefer. I kind of like the messy ones; they're more fun. But the, <laughs> they can go bad. They they don't always look the best. Captain Brown's Minutemen fired the first shot heard around the world at North Concord Bridge, 419-1775. A little fun fact there for you from Bill Gorman. That's the start of the American Revolution, I guess. I know a few things about history. Not really. I do like history, but I should probably fess up to that. I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was a kid because I used to love uh, watching Indiana Jones. So by sixth grade, I thought, hey, it'd be awesome to be like an archaeologist. And then I realized you have to actually go to school for that and <laughs> spend time with it and everything like that. Which to me nowadays, I love, I, I love education. So like... If I could go back in time and tell my younger self, like, yeah, stick with the, you know, school, you know, go off and be an archaeologist, whatever you want to be. But back then I wasn't having it. I was like, no, I don't want to do all that school. That sucks. But yeah, uh, being an archaeologist sounded awesome. So I've always been a bit of a history buff. Um, whenever I have free time and I'm just putting on the TV for like background, uh, like noise or whatever, it's usually a documentary about some historical something or other. I would say the history channel, but the history channel doesn't really have a ton of history nowadays. <laughs> it's all like reality shows and dumb stuff like that, but you can usually find a pretty good documentary about historical stuff. And I just put that on and. I listen to music, um, but if I if I want something where people are talking or whatever, I'll, I'll put that kind of stuff on. I've been looking for good podcasts to listen to, like a good historical podcast. That sounds nice. Kind of flesh out this like eyebrow thing going on over here. So you see the difference, like I go like with really short marks and stuff over here and then for the longer uh, fur area, even though I'm kind of just mashing it all together, you don't see like, like individual hairs in here. It's still like longer marks because it like helps sell the idea that this is, uh, this is for like coming off of the uh, eye. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see, and then above this brow, it kind of goes into a second layer. That's what I love about drawing um, uh, dogs, cats too, but dogs in, in particular, because they, they usually have like this long hair. Um, there's all these different layers of hair and it's fun to do that layering. And basically the layering is that you draw these, uh, areas, you, you basically have three things going on in each layer. You have like a neutral area, uh, like tone, you have the shadows and you have the highlights. So on black paper, it's, it's the inverse of like, if you were drawing on white paper on white paper, you're drawing the shadows, right? So like. Um, that's your, your dark area, uh, here you're drawing the highlights, uh, on white paper, you're leaving the highlights alone here. You're leaving the shadows alone. So it's kind of strange. You get used to it over, over time. I definitely encourage people to do this just as like an exercise. Even if you don't like the style, it's still a fun exercise because it's like, it's really like making you retrain your brain, like. 
Because you, you want to draw what's there, not what you think is there, right? So if you're if you're forcing yourself to switch up between drawing um, highlights versus drawing shadows and stuff, you're back to that whole you know art is science type thing. You're you're making different observations than what you're usually used to doing, and I think that that's that's interesting. I don't know. I think it's interesting. Maybe you guys don't. Maybe you guys are like, well, I just tune in to see you draw a dog picture, Jeremy. I, I don't tune in to listen to you and your opinions, which is totally fine. Everybody's got a thing. So it looks kind of weird just with this forehead on this dog, but, you know, it steps. So here is where the the ear hair kind of comes across. Like I think this is a golden retriever or one of those type of dogs. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to get better at like identifying dog breeds just so that I don't sound like an idiot when I talk about them, which I usually do. I was watching the uh, national dog show on Thanksgiving day um, just because like they brought out all the different breeds and stuff and they were naming them off. And I'm like, Oh, that's what I drew. <laughs> so you got a couple little wayward hair clumps. Coming down through here. And then this kind of goes up into there's this really white thing that really catches the light that kind of comes down. And I want to say it comes down to right about where the ear is. So I have to like draw an imaginary line across here. And then I think this is really the edge of that ear. And then that kind of comes up and around. I think I'm going to go to the pub tonight. <laughs> like <laughs> my mind wanders. I'm like, I'm drawing this ear. And then I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, what am I doing tonight? Cause I am drawing earlier than I usually do. Like this is uh, about three hours earlier than I like. Usually when I uh, draw pictures, because I live on the, uh, in the Eastern time zone, by the time I'm done drawing the picture, it, it's time to like kind of wind down and think about, heading to bed. I usually don't. I, I usually stay up for a couple more hours, but tonight I'm going to have some free time after this, so I think I might go to the pub. Go and see Go and see what the drunk people are up to tonight. So, Dukes, like that, Dukes of Hazard boys? I like that story. I thought they were going to make sequels to that um, that movie with uh, Ashley Simpson. Like, man, that feels like forever ago by itself. But when that movie came out, I thought there was going to be sequels and they, they never got around to it. Maybe they made a second one. I don't remember. But I, I thought they would make a couple of those and they didn't. I don't know if it did well at the box office. You never can tell these days. Like, movies that I like... I go and check the uh, Rotten Tomato scores, and they're just, they're just not doing very well. Or, like, you go and check the Rotten Tomato scores, and um, they did very well there, but then they just don't translate to box office money. Like, the Marvels, it's been getting, a, like, a lot of criticism, and rightly so. Like, they're, it's definitely got some problems. It's not Marvel's best work, but it wasn't that bad. It was fun. I think when it comes out on Disney+, Plus, people are actually going to enjoy it. Um but getting people out to actually see it in theaters, that's a totally different thing. And um, I think they're they're suffering from like a lot of the negative press right now. And uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to go and see it in theaters. That said, I think people would actually enjoy it if they gave it a chance. It's not it's not terrible. It's, fun. it's actually kind of fun. Hey, Marble, how's it going? Doing an earlier stream tonight or today uh, just because like I wasn't able to do one yesterday and... I figured, well, I've got the free time. Let's go ahead and do one. So it's weird that I'm doing one on Saturday anyway, but it's also weird that I'm doing one earlier. But I like it. I like bearing it up. It's kind of fun. So everybody wanted me to do a, a dog staring at a butterfly the other day, so that's what I'm doing today. Because I, like uh, I like the idea you guys have the best ideas. You guys are way more creative than I am. 
but it's kind of cute. So he's just like staring at the butterfly like that just randomly landed on his head. Like, can I eat this? I don't know. Let me get this a little bit lighter through here because this is going to be super bright when we're all said and done. Yeah, cool. Hey, kid, how's it going? Yeah, I'm doing the butterfly thing. It's just a, it's such a good idea that you guys came up with. Oh, it's okay. This is going to be a Christmas party this early. That's cool. Well, enjoy your Christmas party. Um, it, it's okay. Like, I didn't expect a lot of people to come in and watch this. It's, a, it's an odd time, but I wanted to get it done. You guys can always watch it later. That's totally fine. Christmas party um, sounds like a lot more fun than what I'm doing. Oh, I was going through my pictures. I found a really cool thing that I made um, for Christmas a couple of years back to decorate. Like um, I was uh, working at a job that uh, our office area had like a huge window and they, they asked somebody to decorate it. And I came up with this idea of like uh one of those cutouts where you could put your face in it and um it, it said like elf yourself and it was like you put your head into the body of an elf and everything i'm going to share that on the uh, community tab because i think it turned out really well and uh i forgot i did it and i'm like hey it's christmas might as well share that well it's not christmas yet i, I still feel like it's a little early to be celebrating christmas but tis the season I mean, if you if you're at the stores, you start celebrating Christmas as soon as Halloween's over. Like you, that's when they put up those decorations and stuff. All right, so this is going to be in shadow. So I need to not draw over that because the butterfly's casting a shadow. But through here, a little bit of light fur, and I'm still kind of figuring out where all the different major parts are. I think right around here, this is the edge of the nostril. And then we've got some light fur through here. So fun fun tip, if you ever do decide to do this, um, not everybody has Photoshop, but there are some uh, programs out there that you can use to create a black and white picture. Um, what I do when uh, taking a reference picture and getting it prepared for a drawing like this. Um, I should probably show my reference picture, but um, maybe I'll do that after. Uh, but there's a, there's some things I do to kind of prep it. So uh, I'll take a regular uh, colorized picture and uh, I'll first make it black and white. And you can do this really easily in Photoshop, but there's other programs, free programs that you can use as well to uh, create black and white pictures. So the first step is I, I convert it to black and white so that I just have the values, right? Like I don't care about the colors in this picture. I just want to know what's what's highlighted and what's not. And then because the style of this picture is that I really want really highlighted areas and really um, contrasted with really deep shadows, I then take the picture and I up the brightness and I lower the, uh, and I update, uh, I up the contrast and I up the uh, brightness and I tinker with it a little bit until I'm happy with it. But that's, that's what I do. And then it creates this, um, this, uh, cool little thing, uh, version of the picture where, uh, some, some pieces of it are super bright and other pieces are cast in shadows. And it's a lot easier if you take a photo that's already done that, like where the photographer themselves actually did that work to create really dramatic lighting. But, you know, you can't always do that, especially if you're doing a picture for somebody and they're just like, hey, I like your uh, your drawings. Will you do a drawing of my dog? Um, you know, you kind of have to do that work because really they're just pulling a, a photo off of their camera. They, they didn't do all that work to uh, create really cool lighting for it. You have to kind of do that for them. But that's what I do. I, I send it through a few processes to create this really cool version of it that I can then draw from. Um, and I, I think it's a really cool part of the process. Maybe I'll do like a standalone video, not a, a live stream where I kind of show off what I'm doing there. Just, you know, 
for educational purposes. Because I know there's a variety of people who watch my streams. Um, some of them are just hanging out, chatting with me. And then other people are like, hey, I want to learn and everything. And I, I don't feel like I have a lot to teach or whatever, but I do have some tips and tricks. So might as well pass those along to you guys. Because I do think this is a cool style that people should try. And uh, I'm learning what works for it and what doesn't. Like, honestly, if somebody wanted me to do a pet portrait, I'll do a bunch of different styles and stuff for whatever they want. But um, I, I kind of lean towards this as like a cool way to do a pet portrait. I think it's a nice classy look. And um, I'm enjoying it. And like I said, I, I really, I, I wanted to do this uh, in this style just because I kind of wanted to build up my portfolio of pictures done in this style. I've done a bunch, whether they're dogs, cats, raccoons. I did a raccoon like this. Um, I did that little baby deer. That was fun. I haven't done a hedgehog like this. I should do that sometime. But it, it is a lot of fun. So coming out from here, uh, another tip. I, I say this often, actually, but I use different pieces that I've done to like build off of. So I know that at the corner of this, the um wing here if you kind of come down that's where there's another little ridge of highlights and it comes down to just below the nostril so across so i kind of use these like pieces that i've already drawn as um reference points to build off of so i know that there's a highlighted ridge right through here because then it starts getting into shadow down here but through here it's catching that light so the the way i know okay this is where it stops and then it kind of comes up is based off of this wing tip and this nostril bring it across down here so it, i don't know just little coordinates like that it's like playing battleship i guess like i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying guys <laughs> well i'm sorry to hear that bill like people talking shit about each other and stuff that's not cool Hopefully they're saying good things about you. You should just turn off Street's channel and just watch this. Then you ain't got to worry about it. I don't know why people are mean on the internet. So these two kind of come together here. Like on. And then some of this area is going to be like a lot more highlighted. Uh, again, this part of the process is just figure out where the patches of fur are lit up and you know what parts aren't. So it's a process. At least it doesn't look ugly like some of my pictures. My pictures, have, a lot of my pictures have like ugly phases. Um, these type of drawings that I do, they look decent throughout. They look incomplete, but at least they look okay. Like there's no like really serious ugly phase with these pictures because I'm, I'm working on different sections of it at a time. That's one of the reasons why I like doing these. They, they translate well to... Uh, and doing a live stream on YouTube. Not everything does. Uh, I'd like to do some more paintings, but bigger paintings where I get like one of those like larger can like all of my pictures that I do on this uh, thing, they're all nine by 12. So it's nine inches across 12 down. Um, I would like to do some different sizes. I do have some canvases that I, I want to use for that, but I'm not really sure how to rig up my, uh, my camera and everything to record it. So I have to put some thought into that. These are things I'll probably branch into like next year, maybe like try to up my game as far as quality goes of like the uh, actual things I publish on YouTube. Like I don't want to just do live streams all the time either. Um, I want to do more how to videos, that sort of stuff. The, the, the whole algorithm seems to, um, enjoy those like if you say how to draw a dog it'll probably do better than most of my videos 
but you know like you can't really say how to draw a dog and then do a live stream because like really we're just chatting we're not really going over how to actually draw a dog so i might i might change things up and do some more of that in the future the only problem is that those videos take longer to actually produce it's easier to do like a live stream where you're just uh talking but I don't know. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing, in my opinion. So, at some point, I'll get around to that. This is so cute already. Like, it's not anywhere near being done, but it already looks cute. Okay, so let me try to bring this nose down and make it look correct. So, bring this down, and it kind of comes in a little bit. It should end up right around here. You see what I did there, right? So I'm basing it off of the bottom of this this uh, this butterfly's wing, and then straight down, maybe a little bit over, and then right about here is where I end that nose line, and then that's the doggo's nose, and then I know from there, using that as an anchor point, Australian shepherd. I love Australian shepherds. That's what my uh, my friends. Um, not my friend, my brother's uh, dog is. That's the uh, one I drew. I, I drew that a couple of weeks back. I'm trying to remember. But I love drawing Australian Shepherds. They have such cute fur. Hey, I'm Ewu. You have such a fun name to say. I'm Ewu. So based off of this nostril here, I can kind of like box in or frame that in. Let's call it framing. I can frame that in with, that's the other challenge to drawing in light versus shadow. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm drawing here isn't actual features. So like I'm only drawing the nostril. You can only see the nostril because of how the, hi the highlights are around the nostril. Um, same with a lot of this fur. It's so like the eyeball, the eyeball is actually represented by not the eye itself, but the fur around it being highlighted. So you got some little, little bits of fur here highlighted to come down. And then through here, this is like going to be super highlighted, but I have to sketch it out lightly first. So I want to make sure this is about the same as the nose and length and then it starts coming back in. Yeah. So this is tough because I have a lot of area here where I don't have these kind of like benchmarks. So I might abandon this line and try to get in more of those features to build off of. Anyway, like I have the process in my mind. Like, if you guys pay attention enough, you'll probably see what my process is, but it's kind of hard to explain as well. If that makes sense. So all of this is going to be super highlighted here eventually, but I kind of want to get that in there. And then it comes up in here and fluffs up because <laughs> this is all for this is like one of the brighter areas and it's cool like when a dog is backlit like this is um i like these like really bright areas here they kind of like they really uh, do a lot of that selling of the uh uh form of the dog's face Your secret FBI top secret, totally real phone. <laughs> Whoops, he let that cat out of the bag. We all know now. All right, so at the base of the mouth, it kind of comes over, and then this is where another highlighted area starts to develop. And this is also where it starts getting into whiskers, which I will probably save till the end because this should really be done in gel pen. But I'll come back to that. So right through here is another kind of like, let's call it waves, uh, a wave of fur. 
through here. And this isn't perfect, but there is a area here that's kind of like, by comparison, a lot darker. So that's what I'm trying to kind of frame in. And then there's going to be a bright ridge across here. So I'll, uh, I'll spend some time lightening that up. Hey, Tyler. What kind of dog am I making? I think this is a golden retriever. I'm not really sure. It's a floppier dog with longer hair to me, but you don't see the entire dog's face, so I can't really tell for sure. Uh, but basically, it's just a dog with a butterfly on its nose. Great question. I'm not really sure. I'm going to call it a golden retriever, even though I may be wrong on that. What do you want me to get, sir, Tyler? Now, there are some features that will come in through here, but they're so light that I don't really want to mess with those yet. Because, like, this is a shadowed area. I like how the dog's fur just kind of swoops back on, on this dog's face. Let me make this a little bit thicker just so that I know what I'm dealing with over here. Too much lint. I need to store my art supplies in a place where it doesn't get dust and lint on it. Because I do have pets of my own and dog fur ends up everywhere. So this part of the ear is really catching that light. So you've got like some really thick areas of white through here. Still keeping it light until I know where all the pieces are. And then I start highlighting things towards the end. But we'll get that process going. Hey, Joe Dave, how's it going? Oh, it could be a lab. Yeah, okay. Like, I'm not really sure what kind of dog it is. Uh, I defer to Just Dave. Just Dave is my go-to uh, dog expert. So it's it's a uh, it's a lab. We're going to call it a lab. <laughs> I was calling it a golden retriever, but I really don't know. But yeah, staring at a, uh, a butterfly, like, should I eat this or not? <laughs> like, um, this was a request. I forget who originally had the request, but um, Kid had brought it back up, uh, like in a comment, and I'm like, "Yeah, I really need to do that." That I should uh, have a dog with a butterfly on its nose. I think in my Tuesday stream, uh, people were asking about uh, for that, and it didn't really make a lot of sense for that particular picture. But I'm like, "Yeah, I can do that." All I did was, uh, while I was in Photoshop, kind of getting uh, a dog prepared in uh, with like lights and contrast and stuff, getting a reference picture. I actually just added a uh, butterfly to it. So that's another little tip if you're if you're wanting to uh, create like um, a cool reference photo to work from. Feel free to use show to, uh, Photoshop to like uh, combine different elements together. Yeah, I, I did see that, uh, Tyler. Welcome back to uh, Discord. Happy to have you back in there. I think it's cool. More people to chat with. I should start a Discord server um, for artists to share their work. I think that'd be kind of cool. Like people who watch this show or something like that. Yeah, if you guys want that, let me know. It's really easy to set up a Discord server, but there's no point in doing it if nobody shows up. So, like, if you guys want something like that, you guys let me know. It'd be a place for, like, sharing artwork that you've worked on. Maybe get some feedback from others. Kind of build a little community. That'd be kind of cool. Let's see. Yeah, it's so pretty. Thank you. There's some more work to do on it. Like, there's going to be some highlights and 
every time somebody comments on something, I gotta fix it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Marvel Rose was like, "That is so pretty." Oh, let me fix it real quick. <laughs> Artists are so self-conscious. You ever notice that? Like, as soon as somebody comments on something, that's the thing that we're in. We we go to like go and fix up real quick. You would join so quick, you'd move faster than light. All right. Um, yeah, I may, I may not do it right away, but think about that. Um, that's probably a cool thing to uh, start up in 2024. Maybe that's something I'll do uh, to kick off 2024. It's great, like a little community Discord server or something like that. I don't I don't know exactly like what the um, what the rules would be and stuff like that. I'd have to look into that. Like. In my mind, it would be a cool place where people share their artwork, but then, you know, you got to kind of moderate that sort of stuff so that, like, it, it's a safe space for everybody. Um, so I'd have to look into that, see if I can get some friends together to help mod it. Because I, I wouldn't want people to, like, I don't know. Like, I, I like keeping things kid-friendly or, like, a wholesome, family-friendly type environment. So I'd have to come up with like some rules about like what kind of art you can post and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm really big on, um, you know, like free speech and, you know, artists should be able to explore whatever they want to explore and stuff like that. But to keep a place wholesome, you'd kind of have to rein some of that stuff in, especially when it comes to art. So like it would have to be, um, you know, family friendly, safe for work kind of art. Um, so let me put some thought into that. And then I'll end up creating something. Yeah, feel free. Still all my Discord friends. My my five Discord friends. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I think that'd be cool. But no, I mean, it would be like a community type place. So like, you, nobody's stealing anybody's friends. We're all sharing each other's friends. Uh, so that everybody... Um... Oh, are you saying that you already have Discord? Uh, and that if I created a discord, I would be stealing your friends. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I want, uh, I want people to, I want people to share their artwork and get like really useful, like helpful, uh, feedback from friends and, and so on that help them, um, uh, become better artists. That, that would be what I would like to see. What it takes to do that, I don't know. I'd have to give it some thought. I haven't thought about it that much. Oh, if you had a Discord. <laughs> All right. Well, that makes me feel better because I wouldn't want to steal somebody's Discord friends. The thing about Discord is like, I mean, you know, you can you can be a member of a bunch of different like servers. It's a lot like Reddit, you know, like like subreddits and stuff like Whenever I uh, go on Reddit, like there's a thousand different like subreddits that I'm subscribed to. It's not like there's just one Reddit for anybody. All right, well, starting to get a dog face in there. That's good. Um, you can say it never steal me marble from. <laughs> Oh, Tyler. All right, so there's like some light ridges through here. So I'm going to I'm going to call these places like waves of fur and then these are ridges of fur through like underneath the mouth. And they're like really light because this is all like cast in shadow. So I don't want to get too dark through here, but there are some forms in here that I do want to represent. Basically like I don't know, dogs have like basically mustaches, several different mustaches that start their uh, their whiskers. And I want to kind of represent that down through here. And then bring that into the, like the lighter areas. So it's just like little fur patches. Lots of things I treasure, but that's my own Aww. Just Dave has the uh, best dogs, by the way. So Just Dave, for those who don't know, like um, 
Yeah, a lot of people already know Just Dave, but Just Dave works with uh, greyhounds, um, particularly uh, race race dogs uh, in the UK. So he's from jolly old England. I, I'm not sure where in England, but somewhere in the UK. And uh, maybe it's not even England. <laughs> but, no, I think it's England. Uh, and uh, he uh, he spent a lot of time with greyhound dogs, which are beautiful animals. They, they're just like, they're so sleek. And um, I, I, I really enjoy drawing them. They're uh, basically when you draw a greyhound, you're drawing. You're, so here, I'm, a lot of the form comes from the fur, right? So like, you know, different parts of fur make up different features on the dog. With a greyhound, it's all muscle. It, it's it's a lot like um, drawing horses because like they're so short haired. Um, Central England. Okay, good. Um, so, you know, when you're drawing a greyhound dog, you're basically drawing like all the muscle muscle structure on top of the uh, bones and stuff versus some like a big fluffy dog. Um, what's a big fluffy dog? I can think of like a Saint Bernard. Uh, St. Bernard, you don't even see the muscles. It's just a big ball of fur. Um, so it's, it's interesting, the different kinds of dogs. Um, like, I, I was looking at some uh, horse art, uh, I think yesterday. Not like you guys even know, but uh, I think yesterday. So I want to be accurate. Um, and, uh, it, you know, drawing horses is... is it's not for everybody like some people say that they struggle drawing horses and i believe them because you have like some weird uh skeletal and muscle structures there um and uh with horses they're also lean that you are basically drawing muscles right so like if you if if you consider like figure drawing on humans um you know you're drawing especially like if you're drawing like a bodybuilder or something like that or like a comic book superhero they're all like <laughs> like super buff or whatever um you're drawing you're drawing muscle and uh, it's the same way with uh horses and when it comes to dogs some dogs are so sleek that that's all you're really drawing and um long story short gray hands are those but i enjoy drawing them it's so much fun it's like figure drawing of the uh, canine world. There we go. How dare you be British? <laughs> how dare you? I don't know how to do that in a British uh, accent, but how dare you be British? I can't do it. <laughs> I should stop with trying to do accents. I can't do them. That's that's kind of a cool dog. I like this dog so far. Um, all right, so you got this little tuft of fur through here. That kind of and I think I'll work with this some more, but this is a good start. You got some tufts of fur coming up through here. This one's kind of go through here. What are we doing all the time? My dog's getting antsy. Just relax, puppy. Um, and then these kind of come through here. I think it comes down a little bit lower than I did this ear. So down through here. And then you've got another little, this is the jowls, I guess, coming through here. And then this kind of almost, almost a straight line, but a little bit curved. here. I'm kind of just sketching in a line. I'm going to fur this up a little bit here in a minute, but boy, what's wrong with being British, mate? <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to delete that part. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with being British. I can't bloody tell what you're. I can't do it. Ah, I'm just gonna stop trying. I really want to. I wanted. I want to be able to master a British accent. There's some. Uh, uh, some of my friends are really good at that. I. I cannot. The problem is, I. I start off where I think I'm doing well. 
and uh, then I quickly realized I am not, and then it just all implodes, and I, I just can't do accents. I tell you what, I could do a better British accent than Benedict Cumberbatch can do an American accent. How's that? <laughs> like, no matter what he does, he still sounds like he's British. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. He's one of my favorite actors. This looks like your dog, Jack. That's cool. So this this will be lit up down here because, I again, it's backlit. So somewhere back here is the light source, and it's like kind of catching this little bit down here. And then we kind of start getting into, like, neck area. And I don't think I'm going to focus on that. I'm just going to have it kind of, like, trail off, which I think is a cool effect when you're drawing pictures, just to not draw the complete bit just kind of do some highlights and stuff. The focal point here is really the dog's face and the uh, butterfly. So uh, I'm, I'm always talking about this. Like when the further you get away from like the focus areas, the less it really matters what you draw. So you can kind of just have, you can just kind of have the shadows kind of cat, fade off and then the light kind of catch certain areas, but you don't have to like go crazy with down here and stuff. Get some little tufts of fur, but I don't I don't want like a, a severed head or anything. So like I have to put in more than just like one line of, of fur. I don't want to give the impression that this guy's had his head cut off or anything like that. <laughs> Stuff with the Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, dog's barking at the neighbor's dog. <laughs> Shush. You got nothing to say. Fix your face. <laughs> that dog does not care what you have to say. <laughs> no. Nope. Doesn't care one bit. Keep trying to make friends with that dog. That dog doesn't care about you. I'm sorry. It's a harsh reality, guys. I'm sorry. That dog does not care about my dogs. So there's some like curly bits of hair in, in through this uh, ear. So it kind of comes down and kind of curls around, not a straight line. You have to put like some curves in it. And then there's like two strands. Again, you're starting to get into the shadows. So you have to be careful about like what you're actually doing here. Like what am I, what are you choosing to highlight versus like leaving the dark in the shadows? Jack is a brown sniffing dog. Don't know how that works. <laughs> it's not that hard. Like, I'm, I'm sure the dogs met, like this is a neighbor's dog across the uh, way and um, they never have the opportunity to meet. Like, I don't, I don't really like talk to my neighbors that much. <laughs> It's not that I don't like my neighbors. It's just, it doesn't really, there, there's never really an opportunity to engage with them. Um, but I think that all the dogs in the neighborhood are kind of like, they have this like little secret bark network. Like they're having conversations, like almost like a spy network or something like that. I have no idea what they're saying, but they all seem to be talking to each other. Um, I've got some neighbors behind my house too. And, um, my dogs are definitely friends with my neighbor's dogs back there. They have these long drawn out conversations, sometimes in the middle of the night when they're supposed to be doing other things like going potty, they'll have big long conversations with my neighbor's dogs to the back of my house. And I'm pretty sure certain my dogs are friends with theirs, even though they've never met, they're just barking through the fence and stuff. So I kind of like live in a little cul-de-sac. So I have neighbors basically on all sides. And m most of them have dogs. This is a very dog friendly neighborhood. A couple of them have cats too. And of course this is uh, Kentucky. So there's some uh, possums out there as well. Like I catch possums on my fence sometimes. Just staring down at my dogs, torturing them. Do they have possums in like the UK? Or is that just like an American thing?
I don't know. Like, are possums, like, like only like a North American thing? Or do they have possums in other parts of the world? I don't know. I'm going to look that up just because I'm curious. Possums might as well be the Kentucky state animal. <laughs> What's one of my hot takes? I don't know. That the Marvels was actually a decent movie. That all the criticism that, uh, no, no possums. Oh, that's sad. Um, that, uh, Hollywood has turned against Marvel and, uh, it's undeserved. Because it, it wasn't the best movie in the world, but I enjoyed it. And it's sad to me that it's not doing very well in the box office. Like, I don't think people should be hating on Marvel. Marvel's put out some really cool stuff lately. I actually enjoyed Ant-Man and, and the Wasp. And that, that movie kind of bombed and everybody has bad things to say about it. I don't get it because it was such a good movie. And, um, you know, like... A, Thankfully, Loki's getting some praise, so that's cool, because uh, I really enjoyed Loki. Uh, if Loki was getting some, uh, like, if they were criticizing the Loki, well, some of them are, actually, but if, if they uh, were over-criticizing Loki, Loki Season 2, I would be like, man, this is rigged. These aren't real opinions. <laughs> but I've always been a fan of the MCU, and I, I want them to continue making good movies and making movies in general, and um, I don't, I don't like how, how they're struggling right now. That's kind of sucks. Like I was excited about their big roster of new material coming out and stuff, and it seems like they're kind of scaling that back. Like as far as I know, the only Marvel movie coming out next year is Deadpool, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm really looking forward to Deadpool, but like there was supposed to be some other movies coming out next year as well. And I don't, I don't think they're happening. Like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that Daredevil Born Again, and I don't know if they're ever going to make that. Of course, some Marvel stuff does suck. That's fair. Like, there are, um, I don't know, Secret Invasion, for example. Secret Invasion, it was kind of boring. Like, it wasn't terrible, but, like, yeah, it was. It was terrible. I don't see the point in uh, that show. Like, they could have not made Secret Invasion. That That's that Samuel L. Jackson um, series. They could have just, like, skipped over that, and I don't think anybody would have cared. It was not It was not very interesting. Uh, it, it seemed like everybody was asleep in it. Like, when, when your actors look like they just woke up, then you've probably got a problem with <laughs> it. All right, so some of the some of the criticism of Marvel is actually warranted. I'm just saying that I enjoyed the Marvels movie. It was okay. Of course, that's a ringing endorsement to say it's okay. You don't watch any movies? No movies whatsoever? Doesn't make any sense. Everybody watches some movies. I get that movies aren't everybody's thing, but you have to have seen some movie in your life. If you haven't, you should. You should definitely see a movie of some type somewhere just to see what all the buzz is about. Like, people do like movies. It does seem like movies in general are having trouble um, at the, like, it, I think people, they're having trouble filling seats at box offices in general. Like, this past, maybe it's because of COVID or whatever, and like that whole delay in, in getting movies out, but over the past year or two, I haven't seen a lot of, like, really good movies. Like, nothing where uh, people are, like, super excited to go see. I mean, in a world where... Um, Barbie and Oppenheimer are like the two main movies that came out this year. Oh, there's a couple of other movies. I forgot Mario Bro uh, Brothers was this year. But I don't hear like a lot of buzz about movies these days. I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe movies are a relic of the past. I don't know. These things happen.
You only watch movies with attractive women in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I mean, if that's your thing, you go for it. I'm not going to tell you that's the wrong thing. Well, Marvels has attractive women in it. What are you talking about? Come on. You can go watch Marvels. It's, you know, it's literally three women in the Marvels movie. You can go watch that. Yeah, Barbie. There you go. Tell me you don't like movies. Come on. There's movies out there with attractive women in them. So at this point, uh, because everything's kind of in here and I feel comfortable with where everything is, I can I can um, kind of focus on lightening up some areas. So like through here, it's kind of like a little bit denser than maybe over here. Over here should be like super highlighted. So I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on getting that a little bit brighter. The thing that's uh, interesting about working with um, uh, white pencil on black paper is that the black is like you really have to go over the um, black several times in order to get something super white. And I have yet to be able to get super white out of a colored pencil just in, in general. Um, so you really have to work on getting some of these highlights in here. You have to press down hard. And then ultimately, in order to make something super white, I come back with the gel pen just to make it really, really stand out. But the first step is to kind of like just go back over your work with some pressure uh, um, just to get these things like super white. And this area through here should be super white just because that's really catching the light. Yeah, just Dave, I, I completely agree. And I don't know how it is in the UK, but one of the things I've noticed is that so many people have, you know, like they have the extra income to get the big, big gigantic TV, the sound system, all the little creature comforts of home that, you know, people are more comfortable just staying at home now, you know. And I think that's largely due to COVID, but also I saw it kind of happening before COVID. Like when COVID came around, except for that social aspect of being cut off from friends where you couldn't see friends in person, um, people were more than happy to just stay home. And it, it's even worse with like all the streaming services out there now that like people feel like they don't have to go to the movies to have a good time, which is weird because it used to be like a big thing, you know, the dinner in a movie. That was that was always the thing. All right, I'm going to sharpen my pencil here a little bit just to... Uh, have more, more kind of thinner lines. There we go. But yeah, like I, I do think that COVID had a lot to do with it. it, it but I, I feel like COVID just kind of like reinforced what people were want, were feeling already anyway. Like they have all, they have the big TV, they have the sound system, the quality of it's just as good at home. I don't know. People are like, you know, for all the whole uh, thing with COVID where people were like, um, oh, I miss my friends and all that. I feel like people are more antisocial now. So, like, it's it's kind of like uh, a little strange that people missed everybody during COVID. And then, like, now that that's kind of lightened up a little bit, people are like back to hating each other. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not... I'm not antisocial. Like I like being around people, but then also a lot of times I just I'm I'm just comfortable being by myself. I'm uh I can there are times when I don't want anybody around. I just want to go and hide in a hole or something like that. So I I I it kind of depends on what mood I'm in. In fact, it's a little selfish, but it, it actually is like a lot about my mood, like when a friend calls me up and says, hey, you want to hang out and stuff like that? I'm like, yeah, maybe. But then like whenever I'm um, I'm bored and I want to hang out with somebody and stuff like I hope like I, they, they better be available because it's, it's all about me, you know, and it's selfish and it's not the right way to do it. I want to be more um, I want to be more there for my friends, like whenever they need me versus just when I need them type deal. None of this makes sense, I know. 
but you see how I'm like applying that pressure and this is really getting highlighted through here. And um, that's part of the process. And I, I like this part of the process because it really brings out those highlights. It's kind of cool. But yeah, just in general, I, I do think people are way more comfortable being at home than they used to be, which I don't know. Movies aren't the only ones that are struggling as a result. Like I, I see with like restaurants and stuff, like uh, my brother is a chef um, and uh, he's kind of noticed it too, that people are just fine eating at home, you know? Like people are always going to eat out and people are probably always going to go to the movies, but I'm just talking like on an aggregate kind of a uh, scale, like people, people are fine left to their own devices, except when they're not. And then they need other people for mental health, you know? So I want to get some fur through here, but again, this is like shadow from the wings. So I want to keep this kind of light. Should probably get some really bright areas in that wing as well. Somebody on Reddit actually asked me, how do you get your stuff so bright in some areas? Because they, they said that they tried to do a uh, white pencil on black paper and it didn't really work out for them. It really is like a ton of pressure, but then also, there's only so bright you can get with these uh, things. So if you ever do try this and you're using colored pencils, you know, just give in to the fact that you're not going to get as bright as you want. You're going to have to rely on something else. Like in my case, I use ink. But sometimes I do these in pastel and the softer the pastel, the brighter it's going to get. But you're always going to have a challenge uh, getting it as super bright as you might want. And um, one of the reasons why I like these pictures is like these white pencils, like they're easily replaceable. Like you don't have to buy a whole set just to get a white pencil. So I don't mind going through like an entire white pencil. I can I can go off and um, replace that fairly easily. So that's why I enjoy doing these pictures. I enjoy these better than just like drawing in graphite pencil. Personally, that's my style. I'm trying to think of anything else I might have a hot take on. I don't know. I'll have to give that some thought. What are things that I'm upset about? <laughs> There's not a lot. School attendance is dramatically down, something like 10%. Yeah. Actually, I, I got a question about that. So like here in the United States, um, I live in a neighborhood where there's uh, a lot of schools. Like there's um, there's like three or four schools like stacked up along one road. And here in America, people drop their kids off at schools now. Like when I was growing up, that wasn't the case. Like we would walk to school. There wasn't anything that like you know, mandated that kids had to be dropped off or ride a bus or something like that. Um, I, I've i seen lately, though, that, like, um, it seems like there's, like, a long line of cars at these schools and stuff. I was wondering if that's the case in, in the UK as well, because it's certainly the case here in, in America that, or at least as far as I've seen, um, kids are dropped off at school now. And um, people don't like walk to school or anything like that anymore. And it creates traffic jams. That's what I was getting at. So like, yeah, traffic sucks around schools. I'm trying to think, we might have attendance problems here in the America as well. I don't know. I know there's a lot that's changed with schools because of COVID, but I. I don't go to school <laughs> and that uh, like I don't know what all those changes might be. Super bright nose. I like it. And then through here, 
this would be like really lit up again because of that light catching it this also gives you so when coming in and going back over things with, with highlights and stuff it also gives you the opportunity to just kind of smooth things out a little bit and make it look less sketchy yeah it's, there you go school run i i didn't know like a a good term for it but man it's just like traffic is terrible around the schools and again when i was a kid <laughs> like and i wasn't the only one my my parents they like oh you missed a bus well why don't you walk to school i'm not going to drop you off you know that that's the way it was back then i i guess things have changed a lot you know people are more concerned nowadays but um me and my brothers were, uh, I guess they call them free range kids where the parents just kind of let them be. And of course, I only have brothers. I don't have any sisters. So my parents were like less concerned that uh, they should have been more concerned because we would get in trouble with each other. You know, like um, we would egg each other on and stuff and get each other in trouble. But I guess they were less concerned about us getting into trouble. Rightly or wrongly, that's that's their thinking. So they kind of left us up to our own devices, and I like it. I um, I, I'm not advocating this. Uh, you know, everybody raise your kids the way you want to, in my opinion. But um, I I am glad that they gave us that freedom to explore that they did, um, because I'm better for it. You know, I feel like more capable to, to um, of kind of like, I don't know just like solving problems that other people couldn't, that are, were like, you know, too overparented, I guess. I don't know. I like that they give us some freedom. I mean, they give us the freedom to get in trouble as well, and we all did. Um, so maybe it's not perfect, but. Like if I had kids that were schooled age, I don't know, I don't know like how I would feel about um, things the way they are in the world either so i can't criticize anything i'm just noting the differences like uh we walked to school a lot when i was a kid um mostly to like i didn't like going on the school bus so like if even like when there was a school bus available i, I didn't like taking it i would rather walk um and this is before I became old enough where my friends had cars and I would ride with my friends and stuff like that. I'm talking about like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like when I was 13, for example, like 13 years old doesn't seem nowadays old enough to like walk to school. And I'm talking about like a mile or two miles to school. I'm not talking about like 500 feet down the road or something like that. I'm, I'm talking about serious walking and, and stuff. But I'm glad they, they let me live that kind of experience. Uh, I feel like I'm better for it. I don't think that that's something that kids do nowadays. And probably for good reason. I don't know. It's a scarier world we live in nowadays. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I'm sure there's good reasons. I'm not here to judge or criticize. I'm here to draw pictures of pretty dogs. I just know it causes a lot of traffic. So again, like really bright ridge through here. All of these places I already drew, but I'm going back over them with heavier marks to kind of like emphasize those highlights. And then what's cool is it kind of creates those layers, right? So like I've got really light fur through here um, because they're like lost in shadows. I've got kind of like a mid-tone going through here. I'll highlight parts of this to create like a third layer. And um, all together it creates this really cool effect. Takes forever, <laughs> but you know. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's my catchphrase now. I'm going to keep saying that. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Put that on a t-shirt. I don't know. I've always said that. Hopefully everybody's having, like, uh, do you guys have any kind of equivalent to 
Thanksgiving over there in the UK. It's like, it's so weird um, talking to people from all around the world and stuff. I know my nieces uh, who live in Sweden because they're expats, um, they do have some concept of uh, Thanksgiving. Like maybe their Swedish friends don't celebrate, but because they live in like a, a neighborhood that is mostly former Americans or I guess dual citizenship Americans, they still celebrate Thanksgiving. But it's kind of like a start of the Christmas season anyway. So, like, if you guys don't, here we go. If you guys don't have a holiday, you really should get one. <laughs> you should have a pre-Christmas holiday of some sort, you know. Now's a good time to start the whole Christmas process. So, like, if you don't have some formalized way of recognizing this Christmas season, you should get one. Yeah. You guys don't care. That's an American thing. See, I just love when the light comes in and starts highlighting these uh, pieces of the dog. Yeah, right to the government. You need something to kick off the Christmas season. Because you guys have Christmas and stuff. Like, what, what, like I don't know. Like, Christmas in America doesn't start until the jolly fat man is riding down that parade during the uh, the Thanksgiving parade there in New York. That's what starts Christmas. And if you guys don't have something like that, I don't know, like Mary Poppins coming down from, like, with the, with the Santa wig on, um, you guys really need to get some. Hey, that's cool, Bill. You should put, like, a bow on it or something. Mary Poppins dressed in Santa Claus outfit. It should kick off your uh, your holiday season. Um, and uh, if you want to put that in your letter, say Jeremy says we need something special to kick off our Christmas season. That's totally fine. I don't mind. <laughs> Good luck with that, Bill. <laughs> I don't know where you used to live, Bill, but I think um, you mentioned you were moving to uh, Kentucky. We have uh, pretty decent winters here. So, like, I don't know how that compares to the winters you had before, but... Um, I think at some point I, I you were out west. Uh, we definitely have snow, um, but it's usually pretty mild. Uh, January and February are the coldest months, and that's when you'll probably see the most amount of snow and ice and, and problems and so on. But throughout December, it's not so bad. Like today, it was in the, uh, I want to say 40s, and that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Um, it wasn't so bad. Uh, like I said, I went, um, at the earlier in the show, I mentioned, uh, I went for a hike today and it was actually kind of pleasant. Like I, I was wearing a jacket, but you know, halfway through it, I didn't really need it. Just like a hoodie or something like that was fine. All right. So I'm pretty happy with the dog. Uh, I feel like this butterfly doesn't look its best yet. So I am going to go ahead and switch to my gel pen because I want some parts of this to be like super light up in here. So I'm going to blob in some features on this butterfly wing just to get that butterfly going a little bit better. So this is what I was talking about, about like super white. There are some super white features of this butterfly that it's perfect for like a gel pen. And then like the outside edge of the wing and stuff is something you would not want to do in gel pen. 
just because you're not going to get like lighter values with the gel pen. So like the two work well together is what I'm getting at. Gel pen, colored pencil, black paper. That's all the tools you need and a pencil sharpener. I feel like this is a fun broadcast. I should do more Saturday ones. I feel really laid back. Like I, I'm not drinking my bourbon or any of that stuff. I feel really super calm and relaxed. Maybe it's all that turkey I ate. I don't know. First overnight frost of the year. Oof, cold. I don't like the cold, but I kind of like how the cold makes you retreat indoors and get cozy by like fireplaces and stuff. I don't like the cold, but I like getting warm. <laughs> that makes no sense. Um, I like snuggling underneath the blanket. If you have a fireplace, having a fire there, snuggling up with your dog. I like all that kind of stuff. Like you can't do that during summertime. Like my dogs sleep in the same bed as me and like it gets toasty during the summer. But during the winter, like they're like an extra living blanket and I really appreciate that. I think that's cool. Get kind of a finer line going around here. So at this point, like I already had a wing, but I want to kind of make that wing look less sketch, essentially, if that makes sense. Because I do kind of like freehand this stuff. I don't do any erasing really. So it requires me to go back over things and kind of like re-emphasize certain areas and so on. Got a weird little head here. I like that butterfly. It's so cute. So little antennas, but I don't want to get crazy with the antennas. Just have them there. So on this side, this side's in shadow. So I can't use my gel pen over here. I have to just kind of put the same type of features in, but like with the uh, pencils. And winter storm warning. Oh, you're in Colorado. Oh yeah. So probably get way more snow in Colorado than you'll ever get in. We're pretty temperate climate, I think. Um, don't get me wrong, we do have some snow, but it's it's always less than a foot, um, and it's always uh, it's always in January or February. Like, the last time it snowed in December, I mean, it has. Like, we've had white Christmases and stuff, but it's never, like, anything substantial. The ground is still too warm uh, for snow to stick this time of year. Uh, sometimes uh, our November's are... Um, well, it does get cold sometimes in December. Don't I don't I don't want to say that it doesn't. Like I don't want to say that there's not going to be any snow for you at Christmas because sometimes there is, and I want you to like say, "Oh, Jeremy's a a liar." <laughs> sometimes we get that, but like right now, I mean, this is it, it's not very cold out right now, and this is pretty typical. I I don't think it's ever snowed in like no, that's not true either. I was going to say it's never snowed in uh, November, but it has because I know that it snowed one time uh, at Halloween. So it's just not common is what I'm saying. And it seems like things are getting warmer. So maybe those days are over anyway. That's a cool little butterfly in my opinion. Maybe I'll come back and add some color to it later, but I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so I do feel like I can add some little highlight. Now, I've mentioned before my technique on using the gel pen is to make it not look like gel pen. And so what I do is I put some down and then I kind of smear it out with my finger so that it looks like it's blended in with the colored pencil so that it doesn't look like a pen line so much. And I think that's a good technique. 
So it's almost like painting at that point, and then I blend it in. So you get that that white area without it looking painted or penned in or any of that. So I think that's an essential part of the process. I think it's cool. If you guys ever want to try to draw one of these pictures, I recommend that because you get like a glop at the end of the line. And if you just kind of smear it like that little white area on my finger, uh, it, it makes it less gloppy and it looks more like it's blended in. Now, another tip is that if it does look too white, which you can't really see on camera, there's some places that still look like it was pinned in. I'll come back over it with the... Um, the colored pencil and just kind of blend it in a little bit more. The whole idea is to make it look as drawn as possible without, you know, like you, you really want people to be confused. Like, how did he do that? You know, and the, the trick is part of his gel pen, part of his uh, colored pencil, and you kind of blur the line so that they can't tell the difference. It's just, it's just a cool way to do it. So same deal on this nose. Want the nose to be super bright at the edge where the sun's catching it or whatever the light source is just kind of blur that out now you can you can leave some of the lines in with the uh the gel pen if you're like doing fur or something but this is like a nose so it's not supposed to be whatever i was <laughs> gonna say i forgot what i was saying Get some Highlight here and some of this white area of the eye. All right, and then there are some marks where the light is catching the eye on the edge. Kind of a few dots and stuff. I don't know what kind of light source this is, but we got a couple of different dots there. So that's super bright through there. I think there's some areas in the fur that I can brighten up and stuff, but I, I'm liking how this dog's looking. Brighten up this fur ridge here. How are we doing on time? Yeah. Got a little bit of time. Always less than four inches of snow. Yeah, it, it's never a lot of snow here. Like, I don't know. There's the the weather is pretty random. Like sometimes you might get some crazy weather or something like that. But in general, it's only a couple of inches of snow. Like I can't even recall the last time we got like a foot of snow, if ever. Like sometimes they like to say, "Well, we got a foot of snow," and then you actually measure it, and it's not a foot. Like they were just too excited about it. <laughs> like they wanted it to be a foot, and it wasn't. Most times it's only like two, three inches or something. And I, I think it's going like we've been having longer um, falls and shorter winters anyway. So I, I think that we're probably not going to get a lot of snow this year. But again, I don't want you to come come back and be like, Jeremy, you're full of shit. If uh, that doesn't turn out to be the case. It's just a guess. I'm not a weatherman. Let's get some highlights in here on this eyebrow. Again, it's just going back over places that you've already done. Really picking out one or two lines to uh, really throw some light on. And it looks like, you know, those are like individual pieces of fur, individual hairs that are lit up. Increase that kind of depth that you're going for. And you always smooth out the edges so that, you know, the viewer doesn't know where that hair is starting and stopping. It's just the clump of hair. I think I need to bring that forward a little bit. Oh, another tip. Like, um... Weathermen are famously wrong anyway. Yeah, all right, maybe I am a weatherman because <laughs> I'm going to be wrong. Um, 
So another tip when you're, you're trying to figure out like where the light is and where the shadows is, uh, you've probably heard like if you've ever, ever watched any kind of art show, especially one on, um, you know, figuring out values and stuff like that. If you squint your eyes when you're looking at the reference picture, or you're looking at the object that you're drawing. If you squint your eyes, it kind of tells you what the basic shapes of things. So like you can squint your eyes and see that like, OK, through here, I really need to have like more highlight. I mean, you look weird doing it, but, you know, it's all for art, right? So you squint your eyes and you figure out, okay, this area here should be much brighter, should have more light fur coming through it. And then that kind of curves around here with a few little highlights. And then up through here. And then this area through here is a lot thicker. It kind of comes around. And, you know, some more light fur coming through here. So you sometimes look weird when you're doing art, but you know, it, it makes for a better picture, I think. I don't know what kind of dog this is, but yeah, I like it, the problem is you're only seeing the face, so you don't get to judge the rest of the body. And I'm not that good at ju judging dog breeds anyway. So if you're saying it's one dog, I'm just going to defer to you. If you're saying it looks like a golden retriever now, I'm just going to defer to your new opinion and say it's a golden retriever. But you only see the face here. And, um, you know, you're also relying on my ability to draw, which is suspect anyway. Um, so, like, I might, I might set out to draw, like, a lab and end up drawing a golden retriever just because I suck at drawing. <laughs> Which is totally fine in my book. Like I, I, hey, I successfully drew a uh, golden retriever instead of the Labrador I set out to draw. Sometimes these things happen. But yeah, he, um, this dog has like long fur and it kind of slicks back and stuff. Um, whatever kind of dog that is. Oh, and uh, I should mention the dog did start out as kind of like a, kind of a golden uh, retriever's colors. And that doesn't always translate when you're doing a black and white picture. Like, I, I would think a lab would be more short-haired. But I don't know. Uh, I, I've been working with horses for, you know, at least a dozen years, and I'm... I'm not that great at picking out horse breeds either. Sometimes I know exactly what I'm looking at, but most times I don't. Your pug looks like a gremlin. <laughs> oh, your pug drawing that you did. Don't be so hard on you, so I like that, but I, I like that picture. It was good. So I, I kind of had like a straight line going across here, but looking at the picture now, I need to make sure that there's some variation there so that it's not just one big straight line, which, you know, if you vary it up a little bit, it looks more realistic. What's wrong with gremlins anyway? Gremlins are awesome. Like, Mogwai. I can't do that accent either. Mogwai. So this area here should be pretty bright because it's catching the light. But then I kind of wanted to trail off out here and be like less bright. But I do want some fur back here. And this kind of comes, and we have some more straight lines coming off this way, swooping out. Yeah, I guess I needed more fur back here than I thought, because I wanna, I wanna indicate again. I, you know, I'm always talking about this, but might as well mention it now. Uh, art is about communication. 
So like, I want to communicate that the ear stops here and kind of turns into the rest of the coat back here. So I'll draw these lines coming out like this and I'll have the ear hair for whatever you want to call it coming down this way. And then I've communicated that the dog continues back off, off a uh, frame. Yeah, there you go. So it's all what you choose to communicate as an artist. You have that discretion. Like you don't have to draw all the dog. Like I clearly not, but I would do want to communicate parts of the dog. Like there are, hairs that kind of catch the light back here. I want to kind of bring that out of the shadow. I think we're getting close to being done here. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Bring that down. The other cool thing about like these highlights and stuff is you can kind of cover up mistakes. So like I wasn't completely happy with how this hair was flowing in the ear and stuff, but by really kind of like covering up some of it with this highlights and stuff, I can kind of redirect it a little bit. Get some really bright values through here. few really bright lines up here I don't want to overdo it like there's a there's always a risk you know like something can end up looking overdone like right now it looks kind of like Chewbacca Chewbacca has this hair that just kind of pulls back like and, and I'm, I'm running the risk of like filling that in too much so I, I, I want to stop where I'm at there and just kind of leave it up to the uh, viewer's imagination same with some of these other areas so like I do feel like I need more or through here. There you go. What what dog breed is uh Chewbacca? Because I feel like that's whatever the dog breed this is. Because Chewbacca has that hair that's kind of is straight pulled back. Oh thank you, Marble. I appreciate that. I think it turned out okay. You definitely have like a nice glossy eye there, which is good. I like it when an eye can show the, um, the, uh, that it's liquid, I guess. That's a weird way to put it, but yeah, the, the eye isn't dry. Tinker with that a little bit. You get like a really, Really emphasize that highlight there. It is so weird drawing light instead of shadows. Like I'm, I'm like saying, oh, okay, I really want the light to capture there. But it's so much, it's so rewarding. I so much enjoy. I mean, obviously, I enjoy. You guys see me doing it so much, but I enjoy drawing light. Um, even some of my favorite paintings are ones that the artist is really good at capturing light. And um, you know, just an offhand example, like Rembrandt. Um, he was a master at capturing light. Um, and a lot of his paintings do occur kind of like on a black background where the um, portraits just kind of emerge from the darkness. I love that. Like, I'm not there yet on mastering that, but that's really where, like, I, I enjoy that kind of art where something is emerging from the shadows. It's a lot of fun. I, I encourage you guys to try it if you uh, can. A rabbit in his mouth, not a butterfly in his nose. Yeah. Well, this isn't supposed to be a horror story, Bill. It's supposed to be something cute. I felt like that was too straight. I want to. These type of dogs have these really curly haired ears. Get some curly fur going up in here. And then all of this kind of comes down. There's like some more curls through here. And these kind of things go in waves too. So like there's like curls here and then it kind of dips into shadows. And then there's some curls up here. 
and then it kind of dips into shadows. So it's like, it's a fine line. It's tough um, to kind of figure out. That's why you have your reference art, and it's still hard to draw or your reference photo or whatever, but you have these little curls. Pretty nice. Put in one or two more like in the way. I, I don't want to overdo it because I do want it to kind of like just fade out the shadows. But all right, so through here I kind of neglected to put in that jawline there. You can kind of see it, but I feel like I should have more here. This kind of looks like my dog, actually. My dog seems to, I think my dog has this kind of not my Guinness dog, but my little black dog. This is my other dog, I think. Um kind of has this shape. Her her ears are more like cut off here and like short haired, but other than that, definitely my dog has this kind of snout. I think that's why I've been referring to this as a as a girl dog because in my mind I'm drawing my dog bear. Oh, that's kind of cute. Get some more white going through here. And kind of curl this a little bit more. I think that's good get a little bit more white going through here just to like some of this stuff is a little bit lost because it's drawn so light so i'm going to put a little more emphasis on this ridge here of the jaw because like the way the skull of a dog is like all through here is a bone and then it, there's like it comes down and then you have your teeth uh so even though like i'm not an expert on dog anatomy you can see it in the uh in the photo like where all these different pieces are beneath the skin so like it's kind of morbid it's kind of gross to think about but you're looking through the skin at underlying features be they bone be they um muscle things like that so we're we're a weird group of people artists you know like i, I really do think that it, I mean, I've, I said it several times during this uh, stream, but we're, we are scientists, you know, we are peeling back layers of reality to see what what's underneath, you know, in this case, I'm peeling back fur to see the, um, the bones and the muscles and all that stuff, like almost like I'm doing a, uh, um, <laughs> I don't want to say it because it's a puppy, uh, but we're dissecting the creature here. <laughs> And I don't mean that in a gross way or morbid or anything like that. But yeah, you have to kind of look back and look beyond what you see and, and see what's underlying. I do think I can put a little bit more white through here with the gel pen. Just kind of bring it around and then kind of blend that in with the line that I already had. Just to capture that light that's coming through and then kind of smear it out a little bit with my hand but uh, whenever i'm doing this like smearing with my finger i'm very doing it very lightly because i don't want to take it off um i i don't want to take the ink off i just kind of want to make it look like it's part of the uh the drawn parts i don't want it to look drawn in pen because they're totally different styles like what you're drawing in colored pencil looks more blended than like what you could do in ink especially with this i don't maybe it's a 10 point i don't really know but it's not very fine anyway so like the lines i make with this are a little bit thicker than what i'd like to do to get these like little fine things in there a little white there in the eye put in the white highlights up here in the yeah, we're about done, guys. So, like, uh, in case you were wondering, like, <laughs> geez, Jeremy, when are you going to finish this up? I think we're getting pretty close here. Just kind of smudge in some highlights up here. Like, this isn't even necessary. Like, this isn't even um, looking at the reference picture. Now, like, as I often do, the closer I get to um, it being finished, I look at it kind of like, well, what does the art look like on its own? Forget about the reference picture. Forget about what you're trying to draw. What does it look like? Um, what What is the thing that you created look like? And I, I start noticing that, like, okay, some of this area is a little washed out. 
especially when compared to the uh, reference picture. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some touch-ups up here just to kind of like fix some of that. I think um, probably through here this could be like a lot wider. Sometimes a little difficult to work with these uh, gel pens over the uh, colored pencil just because the colored pencil is wax. So you kind of have to work a little bit. And then like sometimes when I can't get ink out, I go down here, you guys see me do this on the, uh, the tape just to get that ink to come out. So yeah, I think we're pretty close to being done. Um, of course, now that I added all that highlight up there, I kind of want get some more mid-range value in here and fill in some of those like little dark areas that shouldn't really be that dark same with up here i feel like there was a little bit more white up here get that whole chewbacca effect where it's like just slick back here but yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, at this point, it is what it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's good or not. I can't go back and fix it. <laughs> but, I don't know. I think that's kind of cute. But a few little marks underneath here. Like just one or two that I can just smudge down. Oh, it's so cute. Sorry. It's a cute puppy doggy. I don't know how much of it translates to camera. Yeah, okay, it translates to camera. This is a super cute dog. If you do that, how to, um, let's see. Puts it over it, um, if you do that how-to series you mentioned earlier, I should be an episode. Yeah, I think so. That's a good idea. Um, I don't know. Like, Kid likes to compliment me a lot on my eyes and stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not the best judge of, like, how good my work is on those and stuff. But, yeah, like, I like... I like eyes like this because really what makes up this eye, it's not so much the features of the eye itself, it's the things around it. So like you, you've you got it framed in by all of this lighted up fur. And then most dogs, you don't even see the whites of their eyes, but because it's like profile and because it's super focused on that butterfly, like that, that dog either wants to eat that butterfly or give it a kiss, um, you know, that really comes through, I think, in this particular picture. Not all of my pictures end up being that, uh, done that well. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I draw people with vacant expressions, you know, things like that. I'm not very happy with that work. But I think in this case, um, I, I think I did a good job of capturing their expression and where their, you know, focus is on and stuff. Like, I captured, um, I think I captured a mood in this picture, which is awesome. Because, like, not everything comes out that well. But, yeah, like a how-to on uh, eyes would be cool. So, hey, I appreciate that. So, I do think um, I'm at risk of overworking it. So, I, I think I'm going to call this done. I'm pretty happy with it. Let me get more of an emphasis around here. Got that wing casting a shadow there. I like that, by the way. Like how that wing is casting a shadow there. It's little details like that people might forget when they're drawing a picture. Like, you know, light source, blocked, shadow. So that's the way it goes. There's probably some more details I can put in here. Let me keep this. Oh, you know what I forgot? Sorry, guys. Uh, one more minute and then we can call it done. I forgot to put whiskers in. I always forget that, especially with cats. I always forget to put the whiskers in. So this is tough. I'm going to draw it in pencil first. Just because I don't want to screw up. So I'm going to draw one whisker there. Bring that in. 
think I should start from the outside and then bring it in. A whisker here. Um, I want a whisker down here. And you see I'm drawing this very slowly because I'm not very good at drawing curls. Like that. Uh, like a little whisker coming off here. A little bit lighter. You got one big whisker coming down here and touching another one here kind of coming out and then this one's going to kind of light it, lighten up down here and then one more whisker to kind of well two more sorry one here I'm talking to myself here sorry guys um and then one more that kind of comes around underneath this one to kind of give it some depth so let me bring that around and then lightly through there all right so we got some more speed in here i want to thicken up this one here with the gel pen and thicken up this one here this, these are the ones that are catching the light the most so again, because the uh, the the color pencils wax, you know, sometimes you have to clean your the end of your pen. That's what I was doing there on that tape. Let's that out a little bit. There we go. And then I think that's the only this one here has a little bit of a highlight on it. And smooth out those sides. All right. So now that I've done that. <laughs> I want to beef up the fur through here a little bit to kind of tie that in so that it doesn't look so weird out there by itself. Same up here. All right. I promise, guys, we're almost done. Get some fur going through here. Such a cute doggy. I'm so happy with this dog. It's pretty. I mean, even if it's not the best drawn dog in the world, it's still a pretty dog. It's cute. It's it's like really into that butterfly, and I love that expression. Like I don't even care if it's a, a good drawing anymore. I'm just like, oh man, this is cute. I might keep this as a uh a gift for my niece or something. She likes cute pictures. She's at that age where anything cute, she's just totally into. Get a little bit of fur going through here, kind of lighten this up. And then, I think I'm missing, yeah, I'm missing one here. I think that'll help there. And that's this one. All right, guys. I think I'm done. All right, cool. Um, dog with a uh, butterfly on his nose. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, let me know, like, in the comments or where, wherever, like, uh, whether or not you like these uh, Saturday ones. I, I can do more of them. I, sometimes I'm busy on Saturdays. Most times I'm not. So if you guys would like to see more Saturday afternoon ones, like ones that are earlier in the day instead of like just the ones I usually do, which are like weeknights and and so on, just let me know. I mean, I can work with your guys' schedule. So thanks, Marvel. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully you guys have... Uh, thank you, Dave. Um, thank you, uh, Bill, for being in here. Thank you, Marvel. Thank you, uh, the people who popped in and had to go. Um, hopefully you guys had a good time. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Let's see, go back to me. Uh, if you guys are in the United States, hopefully you guys have a great Thanksgiving weekend and, um, you know, the holiday season in general. But that's it for me. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye, guys.